who's this cute little guy? This is my new orchid, you guys. I love it, so cute. Boyfriend got it for me. And now we can get started with the video. I just wanted to go show you guys my fun little orchid. I already gave it some ice, I'm taking care of it. Hopefully I don't kill it, but here we are. So yeah, thank you guys again so much for watching this video. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to make sure you stay updated on when I post new videos post every Tuesday and Saturday. I might change that schedule a little bit to so make sure you stay updated on my next videos to make sure that you keep up with the schedule. And as long as you hit the bell, you will know when I post. So if you guys can't tell, I literally came home from work. I had my food, I had some chili, a little bit of Takis too. I don't know if you guys eat Takis, but they're pretty good. I had a couple and I put this coat on over because you know your girl was kind of cold, but now I'm warm because I'm in my room and my room is like a desert. <laughs> so. I'm wearing slab coat, why not? But I am in my work uniform. I actually got this as a request from one of my subscribers. So thank you so much for the video idea. I actually did have this planned already, but I was planning on doing it way later on. So thank you again so much for reminding me I needed to do this video because I had nothing planned for today, but I'm ready, I am set. I'm ready to make more videos and I'm ready to get them out there for you. I'm gonna be sharing with you how COVID-19 has affected my work as a clinical laboratory scientist. If you guys don't know, I am a clinical laboratory scientist. I'm working as one since February of 2020, so just this year, fairly new still. I don't even have a year of experience fully working in a laboratory with my bachelor's degree. So there's like a new little aspect from it. It's not from someone who's been working in the laboratory for a long time. I'm literally working in the laboratory as a new scientist and having to deal with a pandemic that no one has ever dealt with before. So it's a lot of new things for me and other people. And especially for me because I'm literally new at the lab and also having to deal with this whole pandemic. So I'm going to share with you my experience. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys and how that is. And I can't wait to share that with you. I made a little list right here because I like making some lists. And I'm going to share with you exactly what I've experienced, how I feel about it, and kind of what to expect in the upcoming years if you decide to work in the laboratory yourself and we're still going through maybe a similar pandemic maybe the same pandemic is going on but some changes we just don't know everything is very unknown and i'm gonna explain a little bit of that too in this video so one of the things that i've greatly noticed from when i started right before the pandemic of covid19 which is SARS-2 COVID. I don't know what the exact name is. I don't remember. And plus I'm running like little to no sleep. So I will write that down in this description right here. Put the name, official name actually. And so basically one of the big things that I've noticed is from when I started in February to now, I'm working quite a bit more hours sometimes. It hasn't changed too much, but there are times where I have worked like six days a week. And since I'm kind of like still training and stuff, I know I'm probably not supposed to be working that much, but they needed my help. And one of our coworkers had to retire, unfortunately. So that meant I had to kind of step up, which I don't mind because your girl needs some money and some hours. I actually don't mind that, you know, I was able to step up and take on more hours because, you know, your girl needs it. Gotta save some money. Please make sure you save money as well. And I'm new, I literally just started working. I didn't work right away when I graduated college for personal reasons. I think I've shared it before in other videos. If you wanna see them, check out some of my other videos. But I wanted to get more hours, which is completely fine with me. And I've been working more. A lot of people have been working a lot more because some hospital clinics might be short staffed. I work in the hospital. Our hospital hasn't had a huge influx of patients with COVID, but there are areas in the hospital that are understaffed including the laboratory our laboratory is pretty understaffed so you know i've taken on a little bit more responsibility and i am pretty new i'm trying to help as much as i can i learned how to actually use the abbott the covid now analyzer i'll put a picture of it right here if i can find it and if i remember probably when i'm editing i'll be able to put that in here so that's the analyzer i use and I pretty much use it a couple times a day, every single day when I do work, because they're still doing a lot of COVID testing right now. I am not the person who goes on your nose and like scratches it because it is uncomfortable, honey, like not comfy at all. I am the one who actually takes that swab with my gloves on, of course, because you know, PPE, personal protective equipment, we gotta stay safe in the lab. We don't want to get sick. The person takes the swab, puts it on the analyzer and 
we do like a little clicker thing, click it on there, make it as simple for you guys as possible, which is like step one, step two, I don't know. We put them on, Choop, check. Wait nine minutes, no, we wait two minutes for it to warm up, because you know you gotta let it warm up. And then after nine minutes, you get your results, ding, and it's either positive or negative. For the most part, we've been doing really awesome and we haven't been getting many, many positives because I'm in Illinois and Illinois actually did a pretty good job and implementing the stay at home order. So there's not very many cases that are coming up positive anymore as when there was during the beginning of the pandemic or like the initial beginning of the pandemic. Cause you don't really know when it starts, but you have kind of have an idea. And so, yeah, we haven't been getting as many, which is really awesome. And I'm glad that a lot of the cases have gone down, which is good for us too, because in our hospital, we do a lot of outpatient surgeries and a lot of them had to stop because of the virus. They didn't want people who weren't sick going into the hospital. They don't want them being exposed. We don't need additional exposure to employees. So all of that was stopped. And a lot of hospitals incomes were lost because of that. Not just ours, but thousands, like probably millions of hospitals throughout the country would stop these types of surgeries because there isn't really a huge need for them. There are more elective procedures and they're big money makers. Surgeries, if you guys don't know, you don't, if you work in healthcare, if you don't work in healthcare, maybe you didn't know this. I didn't really know this until I started working in the lab. Elective surgeries make b -b -b bank. Okay, one of the big things that I notice and maybe you notice too, is that there is so much exposure and I've already talked about this. So a lot of times when we go into patient rooms that are COVID positive, we have to put on personal protective equipment such as gowns, masks, gloves, even though these are things you probably should already be wearing, goggles, if you don't have like glasses or anything like that. You just wanna be completely protected. You wear your N95 respirators. Um, Shoot, I don't have one here with me right now because I've been losing them left and right. But I know I have one in my car. I usually keep them in my car because I don't really use one inside my house. Like, what? Who uses one inside their house? Oh my gosh, I forgot to turn on the lights. I'm so sorry. I'm like, I wonder wonder it looks so dark in here. But I'm just going to keep going with the video. All right, my lights are back on. They look so cute. They just add a little bit of touch of brightness to the day. All right, yeah. So, so much more exposure to things that are like so unknown. Like, I know for us, we test COVID in the laboratory ourselves. We were trained by... Uh, one of the reps from Abbott, they're the ones who make the analyzer and we were actually trained on how to use them. I was trained on how to use it. And yeah, we got trained. We were told the correct procedure on how to dispose of the cartridges that we use. There we go, that's the word, cartridges that we use to get the test going. And it is pretty scary because a lot of places do, did not have good implementations of you know, how to protect employees, how to protect patients. It was just a really rough mess. And I'm sure that's for a lot of you guys. If you guys work in healthcare or any other area that you may work in that you have to deal with a lot of people, please let me know how it was at your workplace and how hectic it was because it sure was at mine. Another big change that we had to go through is that every time that we go in to the hospital, we have to get our temperature taken and we get asked a bunch of questions on you know, basically, if you guys have COVID or not. And it's kind of funny how everything keeps changing as the days go on. Like, I understand they are learning more and more, but some of these questions, I'm like, okay, like, are you guys just making this up? Or is this, like, a real thing? Um, Some of the questions that were asked when I go in for work are, like, are you feeling sick today? Are you having cough, fever, sore throat? Uh, GI problems was a new one that I noticed. I was like, what? Like maybe there is some GI correlations. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't looked too much into it. There's still so much that's very unknown. And please trust scientists when they tell you these things. Science is here for a reason. And I am not one of the ones who are doing the research, but working in the laboratory, you know, you're more exposed to the facts of science instead of people's what ifs. So please listen to scientists. Don't come up with crazy assumptions. Don't believe everything you hear and find things out for yourself. Oh, besides, oh, okay, okay. Let me share with you guys. So they actually cut out our 401k match, which really sucks because your girl was just starting to save for her retirement. And it really sucks that they're not gonna match that anymore. And for how long, who knows when. I know bonuses 
they're not gonna do a bonus this year because without elective surgeries, the hospital, and I know a bunch of hospitals are not profiting to make enough money for their employees. So they say, who knows? But point is that, you know, we're not getting money. And I'm still getting paid, which is awesome. I do actually get a differential because I am kind of more exposed to COVID, you know, like I'm not really dealing with patients, but I am dealing with specimens and that is exposure. I am getting paid a differential. So like a couple of dollars more an hour. And then we did get a bonus, like a small COVID bonus as well at my workplace. Um, I did get my stimulus. So that was awesome. I mean, I didn't really use it for too exciting things i think i got like one thing i wanted which was roller skates but other than that i saved the rest of the money and i invested in some stocks because you know you gotta be financially smart right invest in stocks and yeah it wasn't too much different it does suck that i was able i was not able to gain the full benefit of that 401k match but that's like honestly the biggest l for me like big l other than that i think my life has been pretty much the same for the most part the only thing is i didn't really get to go out obviously very much during COVID time, which I mean, no one could anyway. So it was a really good time because I was working evening shift most of the time. So I didn't really miss out on the social life too much. And now my life's pretty decent. Like I'm working overnight, overnight shift, 10.30 to 7, 10.30 PM to 7 AM. I'm getting pretty decent to sleep, eating pretty well. I lost like 10 pounds and you know, so life is not going terribly bad, I would say. But just so you guys know, if you guys are wanting to work in healthcare, working as a clinical laboratory scientist in the future, maybe be aware that there might be a lot more changes coming in the future. We don't know where this is going to go. It's already July, but who knows by November, December, there could be something completely different going on. There could be a whole new strain. There could be a mutation. We have no idea what's going to go on. So be prepared for many changes in the years ahead, years to come, education, finance, work, everything is going to be very different. So please be aware, please be safe, please stay healthy. And thank you guys again so much for watching this video. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell because I want to see you guys here on my channel. Please make sure to leave some comments. Let me know in the comment section down below what kind of videos you guys want to see. Let me know what you think about this video. Give me your opinions. How's COVID going for you guys? If you guys aren't in a great situation, I feel for you guys. Like it's really hard for a lot of people. And if you are doing good, make sure you count your blessings every day because not everyone is uh, lucky. There's a lot of people struggling right now and make sure that you take care of your family, be around those you love, make do with what's best, make do with the best you have and power through and you know that there are people here rooting for you and you got this. So thank you guys again so much for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe and thank you again so much. Have an awesome day. Oh, <laughs>